in today's class of operating system we'll be moving on to the next topic which is nothing but deadlock our deadlock avoidance so previously we have seen what is a prevention where we have to eliminate any one of the necessary conditions so that deadlock will not occur now we'll go for the second strategy where we go for avoiding the deadlock so when we want to avoid the deadlock here we have two types of algorithms one we have resource allocation graph the other is banker's algorithm and this resource allocation graph is generally used for single instance of resource so when you have only one particular instance of each resource type we go for resource allocation graph and mult for multiple instances of the resources we go for using banker's algorithm now before moving on to see what is a resource allocation graph or a banker's algorithm we'll see in deadlock avoidance basically we have two states one is your safe state the other is your unsafe state so in avoidance before you allocate a resource you need to have the information about what are the maximum number of resources that are available uh, how many resources are being allocated to a particular process and what is the maximum uh, need of that particular what is the additional uh, resources a process wants so this information should be present uh, with us so this is additional information that has to be present so you know the maximum uh, need of it what is the allocated and what is the next need that is required for a process so if you are able to allocate for example in an example we take p1 p2 and p2 p2 where you have a resources allocated as r0 r1 and r2 assume so each process may request for a particular resources at a particular amount of time so you have to find up a sequence where the resources can be granted to all the process or not if you are able to grant the resources to all the process in any of the sequence irrespective of their request then you call that as a safe state if you are not able to find a sequence where you are not able to allocate the resources that are required for a particular process then it leads to an unsafe state and here if it is in an unsafe state it leads to a deadlock so uh, it is not compulsory that all the unsafe states may be leading to a deadlock now when you go for the resource allocation graph here we already seen a resource allocation graph where you have a graph with vertices comma edges and in the vertices we already know you have a process and your resources and edges you have your assignment edge and you have your request edge other than these assignment and request edge we have one more edge which is known as a claim edge so the claim edge is uh, indicated with a dotted arrow so claim edge here is nothing but it will be from a process to a resource indicating that in the future this particular process may request for this particular resource and if this particular process is currently requesting the resource the claim edge will be converted to a request edge so claim edge will be converted to a request edge and when it is finally the resource is been allocated to a process it will be converted to an assignment edge and after assignment edge you will be going for releasing the resource so this assignment edge will be again converted back into the claim edge so this is a process of conversion from one edge to the other edge now we'll now see how we go for uh, detecting a deadlock when you go for using a resource allocation graph see resources are represented with a rectangle and here you have your process so you here uh, resource uh, you have a edge here so this is nothing but an assigned edge because this resource is been assigned to this particular resource sorry process and p2 is requesting for it so this is nothing but your request edge and here you have a claim edge so p2 wants a resource r2 similarly p1 also wants a resource so this is a future indication so in future it may ask for the resource but while it is performing the operation you may get a situation that uh, this particular request uh, claim edge is been converted to a request and finally the request is been converted to assignment so this is your assignment assume you first decide if i am just assigning a resource to this particular process you check once you are making this claim edge to a request and finally to assign you check whether there are any cycles if you just see this graph you have a cycle right p1 to r2 r2 to p2 and p2 to r1 so this leads to a cycle so you are able to see that since if you are converting this claim to an assigned edge it leads to a cycle and if you are getting a cycle in a resource allocation graph it compulsory leads to a deadlock so in single instance we go for a resource allocation graph where a cycle in the deadlock avoidance or resource allocation graph will compulsory lead to a deadlock whereas the same resource allocation graph what we we are using cannot be used for multiple instance because the presence of a cycle may or may not lead to a deadlock 
for that we go for using for multiple instance we go for using bankers algorithm and in bankers we generally divide this bankers into two types one is your safety algorithm the other is your resource request algorithm so coming to your bankers algorithm here basically we require these data structures or you go for your arrays these can be used in the form of your arrays available max allocation as well as your need so when you go for your available it is one dimensional and when you go for your maximum this is your two dimensional array allocation is also two dimensional and need is also two dimensional where the dimension of the matrix here is nothing but n by m if it is a two dimensional where n indicates the number of process and m indicates the number of resources and if it is a one dimensional the size of it would be m which is related to the number of resources so we have to take care so this will tell you the number of available resources what is the maximum requirement so column would be the process p0 p1 and p2 and this would be your resources so this is your two dimensional array where against each of these cell you indicate that what are the number of resources maximum number of resources p0 wants for this r0 similarly if i indicate four here it means that p1 p0 wants four resources of type r1 and similarly you have for your allocation and your need and this is your maximum allocated indicates how many of the resources are currently available and when you subtract this max minus allocation you will get your need matrix so this is the calculation which we'll be doing now we'll just see the safety algorithm here now having seen all the available uh, matrices or arrays what we require now we go for initializing two one dimensional arrays one would be the work and work size is equal to m where m indicates the number of resources and finish size should be equal to n where it indicates the number of process and both you have your available matrix which is already with a value that you will be initializing to your work whereas the initial value of your finish will be false and you start with each of the process and check whether your finish of i is less than or equal to false means that it has not completed its work and whatever it requires whatever a need a particular process requires if it is less than or equal to work then if it is less than or equal to work then you continue with increasing the value of your work plus allocation so whatever allocated value is there you will be just incrementing them because you are making an additional allocation of the resource and you make your finish of i is equal to true and in the fourth this process will be continued as long as you can uh, come continue with all the process once you have finished and you are able to get all the finish of i is equal to true then you say that you are in your safe state and sometimes you will not get finish of i is equal to 2 for all the process then in that case you can say that it is an unsafe state even if one finish of i one of your finish of i is for example if i go for true 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 and one is false it leads nothing but your unsafe state now uh, we'll go for an instance of a problem here where you will be giving the process you will be given an allocation matrix the maximum requirement and what are the available resources first we need to calculate the need matrix need matrix is nothing but here it is maximum minus allocation so we go for calculating max minus allocation you will get this matrix available values will be directly given if the available values are not given your total instances will be given a b c what are the total instances in the problem 10 5 and 7 which are been given here so if you want your available 10 you have your total 10 right you just sum up all the column values of a 2 5 plus 2 7 so 10 minus 7 so 10 minus 7 would be 3 similarly b column values when you sum up it is 2 5 minus 2 it is 3 and similarly when you go for 2 2 2 it is nothing but 5 7 minus 5 would be 2 so this available can be calculated now we'll start the actual processing the first step is work is equal to available so work whatever available value you have you initialize it and finish you initialize it to false because you have five process now for i is equal to 0 you check the condition you have to check is whether your need of any process need of 0 is less than or equal to work so what is your need here 743 is it less than or equal to your uh, uh, work value what is your work value 332 743 is not less than 332 so you st you stop it there and go for the next process and in the next process what is your work value 122 122 is it less than 332s so when it is less than 332 means that you can allocate a resource 
So when you want to allocate a resource, you have to maintain a separate sequence, meaning that you are starting allocating for process P1. So in the sequence, I'll update it as P1, comma. You have to make your work is equal to work plus allocation. What is your work value? 332. And you take the corresponding allocation 200, then it will be 532. And in the finish, you make that corresponding value is equal to 1, indicating that the process has finished the execution. Now you are at i is equal to 1, right? Now you move on to the next step. i is equal to 2. What is your need value? 600. What is your available value? Updated available value? 532. Is 600 less than 532? No. All the three values should be less than, right? So it is not. So if this becomes false. Then you move on to the next step. i is equal to 4, where your need value is 431 and your work value is 532. So here it can be allocated. So sorry, your need value here is 011 and your work value is 532. So your need is less than your work. So you make it as true. And then in the sequence, you will be just adding up the next process that is nothing but P3, 013. So P3 would be added in the sequence. Again, you check work is equal to work plus allocation. 532 was a previous work value plus your allocation. You are only making the changes on the work available. You are not touching. Work is equal to 743 and similarly P3 you make it as true. And next come to I is equal to 4. What is your need here? 431 and a work is 743. Is, it is less than. Again change your work is equal to work plus allocation. Work is 7, uh, 743. Allocation is 002. 743 plus 002 would come about 749. And you make the corresponding value. So till now these are also true. And you just add it in your sequence. Now, since you have done with till P4, again, go back to the same situation. Now, you are at P4. Again, check for your P0. Now, what do your P0 need? What it wants? How many? 743. What is your work value? 745. Now, it is less than. Means that it can be accommodated. So, you can allocate it. Change your work. Work is equal to work plus allocation. 743, I mean, 745, whatever your work value, plus the allocation of your uh, P0 is 010. So this would be 755 and you make this P0 is equal to 0. So next sequence is nothing but your P0 comma. Now you left, see P1 is done. P1 is done. Now you are left out with P2 wherever there is a false. So you again check the condition whether this finished of I is equal to false. Yes. So again you check whether your need is less than or your work. Yes. Now it can be added. So you add your uh, process into the sequence. Now in all these cases, now if you just see the finish of I has been true and the safe sequence is P1, P3, P4, P0 and P2. So in the total algorithm, first you have to check whether the finish of a particular process is equal to false and then check whether your need is less than or your less than or equal to your work. And if these two conditions are true, then you change your work value. How do you change your work value? Work is equal to workplace allocation and you just change your finish value to true. So checking is two steps and changing is also two steps. Now, now we have a situation where you have a resource request algorithm. So in the resource request algorithm, what we do is each process will be giving some request. So request of I is related to some particular process. If it is less than or equal to the need, you'll move on to the next step. Then you check the availability of that particular process also. And if both of them are true, then you say the request can be granted to a resource and you ever necessarily you change your available value, allocated value and your need value. Previously, you were checking with work. Now here we'll be checking with available. And after you check this condition, you again apply the safety algorithm. Whatever steps we have seen previously, the same steps are to be applied again to check whether the system is in a safe state or not. Now we'll just see an example here. So in requ resource request, what will happen is you'll get a question like this. If P1 requests one additional instance of resource type A and two instances of resource type C. So the request is 1, 0, B doesn't want and two instances of this. So request is 1, 0, 2. Now you have to decide whether request can be granted or not. So what we have to do, you have to check whether the, your request of this particular process, which process P1 is less than your need. What is your need value here? 1, 2, 2. Is it less than the need? Yes. So you move on to your next step. And what you have to check, you have to check your request of 1. Is it less than or equal to your available? You will be taking the same values as specified previously, where it was 3, 3, 2. So since it is also less, you will make the corresponding changes in your available matrix because you are granting a request. The available should change, right? 
so available is equal to available minus request what was your original available 332 minus what is the request you are giving 102 so when you subtract these values you get a value of 230 this is the updated available value and your allocation is equal to allocation plus request what was your previous allocation so whatever might be your previous allocation to that values you will be just adding up 102 and the 102 and this would be your new allocation similarly you will change your need you will be taking only the previous matrices as as it is and make the changes need minus request so whatever may be your need so it is 122 122 minus 102 that will be your need so after you perform all these steps you will be again performing your safety algorithm so how would you start your safety algorithm based on this you have already calculated your need values right so you have your allocation need and available so this would this will be your current available value where will you initialize to your work and you make finish of i is equal to false again start working the same safety algorithm and identify a sequence whether you are able to get into a safe state or not so resource request algorithm should even run a safety algorithm after you are making the corresponding changes of your request now now whatever the part we have learned here in this particular session related to that you have a lab exercise which is exercise number five where you have five process you have your allocation and maximum and available matrix given so you have to write a program where how many instances of the resources are present need matrix whether you have to check whether it is in a safe state or not and resource request so the program should contain both the algorithms resource request algorithm and the safety algorithm and print the output accordingly we'll go for seeing deadlock detection and recovery in the next class